All right, hello students. So here is the next tutorial. This one will take you through uh, movement. Now, I kind of built an example here of what we'll be making. And as you can see, it's just a little chess piece. It's just a little chess piece moving around in a grid. Let's go ahead and create. All right, first thing I always like to do is rename the project. So here we are. All right, well, just like in the example, what we're going to have is we have four buttons for movement control. And I know some of you have been dealing with uh, the arrow keys, which is awesome. That would be the uh, key press uh, the key press up and press down uh, things. So that, that's really cool. But for this one, we're going to be using the buttons. So we're going to need those four movement buttons. And I'll just put those down there. You can have them at the top of your screen if you like. It's all up to you. All right. And then, of course, we need that, uh, we need that grid. And for the grid, I just use an image. Because if you notice, nothing else here would really be a great, great choice for that. So go ahead and upload um, the file. And I need to remember where I actually saved that. So let me check. That's on the desktop. Okay. So yeah, do it right here on the desktop. Don't save that. And choose that. Well, not save, but upload it. And there you go. Uh, for those of you in my class, which is probably all of you, that would be uh, right here in the files. It's in our free to use images folder. All right, so that's an oh okay full thing. Shut up now. All right, so now that's in there. Uh, we have one more image to add, which is our chest. Which doesn't look very good, but oh, that's okay. Maybe you'll make make a better chess piece for yourself. All right, we want it to be sized enough so it fits nice and snug inside inside that grid, and we are ready to begin. Well, at least we have all the elements here. I'm going to go ahead and just for my preferences, size those. And you notice how I'm still renaming those buttons with descriptive names. So that way I can uh, figure out what they are later on. And actually, I'm just going to use, since we're going to make these actually kind of small, I'm going to just use the first letter of each of each uh, direction. All right, up, down, left, right. Okay, then I think everything's about ready. Uh, we have our four buttons. We got our image. We got our graph. All right, the whole thing for this one, like in the other project, was to, uh, so that way we can use the movement to move that chess piece around. How much use does this have? Well, taking from this lesson, my hope is that your You've seen and have experienced what it is to use these movement controls to um, abstract that process, the process of uh, handling an image's position and making a change, but instead of making a change through just directly altering its, uh, its position, you do it through user interface. Let's go and go to code now. All right. Uh, so what we need is the handle for the user pressing each button. So we're going to go and use on event as always. And on the event, the up button is clicked. 
we'll name that function. All right, when this button is pressed, we want this to move up a certain amount. Now, if you notice, there, um, there's the x and y um, coordinates on any time your little uh, cursor is hovering over the screen. And if you notice, just like a Cartesian graph, and um, Cartesian graph, just so we're clear, uh, is, uh, is just your normal graph from high school math. So you notice just like it, x goes from, z from 0, or well, goes from small to big, but y is going to start at the top at 0 and then go to larger at the bottom, which you're maybe not used to, but just notice that. Might save you some trouble. All right, so the y we're at here for this, for this uh, image, y position is 125. So we stuff my 125, and we notice we want to get up to, oh, it looks about 85 there. So if we start at the top at 0, and then we go down about uh, 1, 2, 3 spaces, and we get 125. So maybe about 40 times each. So that's what we want to do then. We want to make this one, when we press the on button, up button, sorry, not on, but up, we want to subtract that y by that much. It's at 125 now. Let's make it be 85. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. On the event with the up button's clicked, we want to set this thing's position. Now you notice I'm setting the position of. Ooh, we should go ahead and rename these. Red image and um, piece image. Just so that way we can tell the difference. So I want to change my piece image. And hmm, for these parts now, I want to go ahead and use this method called the, uh, the get. Where is it? Ah, uh, the get x position. The get x position and get y position of our piece image. So that it's, you know, it's, uh, because we want to base it around what that image already is. So the X isn't going to change if you press up, but the Y does. So we got to go in here, and I'm going to use this minus. It's from the math toolbox. I'm going to use the minus, so that way I subtract the Y position by, we said, about 40. So by, by minus 40. Now as for these values, for these values, you don't really want the size changing. That's what those next two, um, sorry, that's what those next two things are, the width and the height. Well, we don't want that changing too much, so, or at all, really. So I'm going to go ahead and take this height right here, which is 40. And we know it's 50 by 40. Because again, it was not exactly a square. So we get that. Now let's go ahead and run this. And as you see, there we go. Onwards to infinity. None of the other buttons will work, of course, because we haven't made them yet. Alright, now that, that takes care of that button. Now I'm going to show you something. I think I showed it in the last tutorial, the show text feature. Let me go ahead and show you why you might want to use that, even if you prefer the blocks. To make this next one, again, you don't really have a copy and paste method, uh, way of due process of doing this. You'd have to go ahead and drag this out, and all that. So I'm going to do, is I'm going to take the show text, copy and paste it, so, and then just change the values. Now instead of on the click of the up button, let's do the click of the down button. Name our function down. 
It's very important that you do both of these things. And this time, instead of subtracting by 40, let's go back into the code here and add 40 so that it goes down 40 uh, units. Now what we got, we go up and we go down forever. Now here's the problem. You can cover up your buttons and it's way off the grid now. This is more, this is less a chess game and more when your opponent gets mad and flips the board over and all the chess pieces leave. So we'll we'll take care of that next. All right. No, well, actually, let's let's just do that part now. So let's handle that. We want to do it as long as uh, it hasn't gone off that board. So of course, whenever you have to do an if statement, you got to use if, which is in the the control toolbox. All right. So we only want to change its position if it's still on the board. Now up, well that's a minusing. It keeps going lower and lower until it reaches uh, 45 because the y starts at 125 and then we keep subtracting by 40. So we only want to do it if it's green. If, if, um, now where is it? Here we go. If the position, if the y position of our um, of our piece is greater than 5. That's the only time we want it going up. So if it is greater than 5, which it currently is, it's going to go up. And still is, so it goes up. Still is, so it goes up. And now it's not. There you go. Collision. That's basically also, for those of you working on some more advanced projects, that's basically collision detection. Also, collision detection is like the most annoying part of any any game you make. Um, that was, at least just that was my experience with it. And let's go ahead and handle the other side of that. Because um, if we go down, oops. We have to not have that there. Um, if we're going down, we don't want to go any further. If it's here, we want to stop going down. So if it's here at the, um, we're going to assume at the 290 mark. No, it doesn't make sense. Start, let me do some quick math here. We start at y position of 125, we add 40, so we go to 165. Uh, 205, 245, and 285. Okay, so if we're at 285, we don't we we don't want it to do it. So as so long as it's less than 285, we do want it to change the change the position. So let's get that if statement in there. Get the less than. There we go. That's pretty cool. We've got up and down taken care of. Nothing to left and right yet. But this is where I'm going to go and suggest again to use that show text feature. Copy it and paste it. Then go right on ahead and change those around. Uh, now I'm just going to do the left button because I think after this you should be able to handle the right button. There are some major changes we have to make. Because, ah, we don't need this right now anyway. Um, because we're no longer, sorry, I'm just uh, ignore this part. Okay. Since we're no longer, I'm just going to get this. All right. Since we're no longer um, changing the Y position, 
This time we're changing the x position. 